three months ago, eight unruly Australian ladettes embarked on a life-changing journey. They were sent to an old-fashioned English finishing school for a complete re-education. It was an unlikely solution to the problem. Go and put it on now! I feel like I'm a f***ing dog on a leash at the moment. And the ladettes fought every inch of the way. This is not the f***ing what I wanted. I wanted to be helped. You've got to understand, this is an extreme situation. We're doing an extreme boot camp here for young ladies. I'm so angry! Believe it. I wanted to show them I can do it again. This is tough love. But for some of them, at least, it seemed to work. I mean, the school has obviously done wonders for the girls. Three months have passed, and now the teachers are making the 10,000-mile trip to Australia. Where they'll discover whether or not their most wayward ladettes ever... You're beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you. ...really have become ladies. How have you got on with your trying? She may say she doesn't swear so much, but I think that's probably all. It's three months since Principal Jill Harbord and Vice Principal Rosemary Schrager waved goodbye to their first ever class of Australian ladettes. Having worked so hard on them and then sending them back to their old environment and we hoped that they would have the strength of mind to carry most of it through. But were these hardcore ladettes beyond redemption? The teachers plan to find out. Australia, Sam, isn't it? And now they're making the 10,000-mile trip from Eggleston Hall all the way to Australia. Gosh, it's busy, isn't it? Rosemary, have you seen on the back of the taxis? Our faces on the back of taxis. I mean... Do you know? Imagine. I think it's hysterical. I can't believe it. It's actually quite... Ladylike? Well, it's not very ladylike, is I'm, it? I'm, I'm going to take a photograph. <laughs> I think when we see the girls, I have very high expectation. I don't want to see bare midriffs. I want to know that everybody has got underwear on. I shall never, never forget Nicole's little face when she came to the end of that course. She was so sad that it had come to an end. She didn't want to go, did no. she? And I think that is a very sobering thought mm. for you and me. Mm. I agree. Of how important this can be to these girls. Because it's not just a programme, it's a, it's, a, it's a school where we're trying to help these young girls. And, and we're showing people that discipline can work. <laughs> But three months ago, when the Aussie Ladettes touched down on British soil, their behaviour was so outrageous, even the battle-hardened teachers had their doubts. When I saw them approaching down the driveway... Where are you, son? I felt just a sinking feeling. Oh, I can't believe it, Rosemary. I felt that we weren't equipped for this sort of rudeness, out of their heads with drink. The whole thing looked unmanageable to me. Happy term. Happy term, I think, definitely. Here's to success. You know you want some! Turning this rabble into ladies was always going to be an uphill struggle. Get into bed now! What the teachers hadn't bargained for was the effect the ladettes would have on them. You get quite close to them. You get really fond of them in the end. I'd like to put a smile on that face. How different. Different? Look, drop dead gorgeous, girl. Come on. What a transformation! They trust you and they open up. They give you their lives. 
Oh. Now, that's quite humbling, and you can't help but actually start thinking, these, these are such special people. You deserve this, and we're so happy for you. And this is the beginning of a new life. But how will the girls cope in their world? It's all too easy to slip back into old ways. The principal and vice-principal have finally arrived at an exclusive club in Sydney Harbour. The wait is nearly over. I'm just praying that they're doing well, because we've come so far to find out, you know, let's hope that it's all going to be worthwhile. I am slightly pessimistic. You know that about yes. me. And I can't believe that they will all be absolutely as they left us. And hoping more than anything that I'm going to see 100% success. But you know, I've taught for too long to be quite so stupid as that. Yes, I've almost got butterflies in my tummy. Yes, I know. Wondering as to whether they'll be what properly they be like. dressed. Exactly. Oh, can't bear it. ago, beautiful wasn't quite the word Rosemary would have chosen for Sarah Brunton. When you first saw her, you think, my God, she's more like a man than she is a woman. It came as no surprise to find out Sarah had spent her working life down the mines of New South Wales. Try us a fucking cam, would you? <laughs> <laughs> She'd never been feminine in her life. She'd never worn a dress. Harden the fuck up, you blokes. The major thing that I wanted to achieve out of this experience was to get in touch with my feminine side. Shoulders down. I want to learn how to do all this dress and shoes and so stuff. start to like it. At the beginning of term, she made an effort to put her blokey behaviour behind her. I work in the mines. No family connection. Oh, really? The teachers were impressed. When Eggleston Hall played host to an English hunt, they chose Sarah to ride out. Yeah! And that's where it all began to go wrong. She brought her Australian flag out with her. A flag? <laughs> you have behaved rather like a hooligan. After a serious breach of hunt protocol, Sarah then questioned everything that Eggleston Hall stood for. Jill, is are you trying to turn us into decorated fuck dolls for the pleasure of men, Mrs. Schrager? Don't be so silly. What a ridiculous thing to say. But the teachers sensed there was another side to Sarah a side she was keeping hidden. Why don't you let your guard down a little bit? Stop being so tough. That's when I realised that I had to take, take the situation seriously. I think what they said is true. They're right. I put a wall up. This was a turning point for Sarah, one that would eventually unlock a painful chapter from her past. Sarah, are you all right? Coming up. I didn't want to lay myself emotionally bare and have people see me cry. And Nicole, the stripper turned society girl. I had a problem myself with Nicole to begin with. I didn't think she'd last five minutes. Having flown halfway across the world, the Eggleston Hall teachers are in Sydney for a reunion with their first ever class of Australian ladettes. Oh, good girl. Finishing school is no picnic, and the principal is unrepentant about her methods. If I had a choice tomorrow, and I was able to offer a different way of educating these girls, I wouldn't change. I don't mind being called old-fashioned. If old-fashioned is learning self-respect, good manners, 
gosh, I wish we all could do it. Self-respect and self-knowledge are the cornerstones of the Eggleston Hall philosophy. And the teachers wanted Sarah to dig a little deeper. Why don't you let your guard down a little bit? Stop being so tough. I thought by being vulnerable, it was being weak. And I'd, I'd chosen to be so tough <laughs> that I, I didn't want to lay myself emotionally bare and have people see me cry. Sarah, are you all right? A lesson in flower arranging brought up painful memories. 18 months ago, Sarah's only sister died, leaving behind two daughters. She is munchkin. <laughs> For her niece's sake, Sarah decided to try and become more feminine, but she still hadn't come to terms with her own grief. I really miss her. She's got two little kids and she left. And I love them so much. The one thing that we did manage to do was to allow her and to get her to talk about some of those sadnesses, to actually address it and face up to it. I haven't really had time to deal with it. And it's just coming out now for some reason. That was one of my deepest issues that was holding me back in life and I started to face that. It was very difficult. From now on, we will take no prisoners. But a week later, when asked to wear a posture harness, the rebel in Sarah returned. Why are you making a face, Sarah? Because this is incredibly uncomfortable, Mrs Harwood. I thought that was just shit. I was like, no way. <laughs> Sarah, have you got that thing on? Stand up straight. She started to rebel. You haven't got it on, have you? Sarah, go and put it on now. I feel like I'm a fucking dog on a leash at the moment. Sarah. Now Sarah indulged in an orgy of rule breaking. Uh, Excuse me, don't, well, don't you? She just fucking makes me feel like a five-year-old kid. Why are you doing this? I'm 29, like, what am I doing running away from her? How dumb is that, like? But at the same time, I don't want to go home and go back to my normal job. I'd like to apologise to all of you for my behaviour and for running away from school. But it was too little, too late. Sarah, I would like to ask you to leave. Please. I'm a little better. <laughs> Actually, really tearful. Completely and utterly uh, hopeless. It's ridiculous. I was very, very sad indeed to see her go. I felt she could have gone all the way. She'd just come leaps and bounds. And she also owed it to herself to finish something. That was the important thing. She never seemed to finish anything. She had to see it through. And see it through, she did. When asked to stand in for Nicole's family, Sarah came back. If I had have walked away from Eggleston Hall that week and not had that opportunity to come back, I probably would have reflected on the experience very negatively. Mrs Harwood, ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege for me to be here today. I realise that the teachers were not trying to turn us into dolls for the service and pleasure of men. <laughs> but to give us the skills to conquer any challenge throughout our lives. Now back in Australia, Sarah's revelling in her newfound femininity. You know, these girls have all got different stories, but for you, you are a completely different girl in terms of looking, you know? My workmates think I've scrubbed up all right. <laughs> Sarah has a new look, and with a new job in the pipeline, she's making big changes. I, I've discovered self-confidence as a woman. Before, my mates would describe me as, she's a top bloke. And I've actually had some of mates from work not recognise me since I came back, because I look like a girl now. I, yeah, I've sort of, I think I've ditched my tomboy look. 
since leaving us, I think you've got better and better and better. You are, you've moved on now. I think you've moved on from us. Oh, yeah, definitely. Unbelievable. She knows what she wants. She's got a good job. She feels great about herself. She's doing it in her way, which is the way it should be done, in her way. The major thing that I wanted to achieve out of this experience was to become a better role model for my nieces in a feminine way so that I can encourage them to, to believe in themselves and follow their dreams. My little niece said to me the other day, I like your hair like that, Auntie Sarah. You look like Mum. Yeah, that is special. She needed to come to Eccleston Hall. She needed that to use it. She used it to her best advantage. And that's perfect. Coming up, Eggleston's wild child, Sky, has a bone to pick. I didn't deserve it that bad. Five ex-ladettes are doing their best to impress at a reunion party for former pupils. Will you stop dropping <laughs> all your food? I think Sky needs another year at Eggleston Hall. <laughs> Now, what do I say about Sky that isn't rude? No, I'm only joking, really. <laughs> the week one, I just thought, let's just have fun. Of all the ladettes, it was Sky Harper who made the biggest first impression. <laughs> I was getting picked on. Right, come here, Sky. Come with me. Sky, principal's office. Sky, this. And it was so not fair. You're all a bunch of faggots. You know you are. You are a menace to society. I didn't deserve it that bad. What are we going to do? Is it beyond all hope? It didn't take long for the staff to realise they'd got a real fight on their hands. It was a very long and hard journey with Sky, and certainly I think lesser mortals than us would have given up. So they set to work. You're just being cheap. Sky's first challenge, cocktail hostess at a soiree for some of Britain's most eligible bachelors. I was at the bar serving drinks. The rest of the girls were socialising and handing out the food. And I thought, this is not fair. You know, we've got lots and lots of guests waiting. This is very slow. And there's so many people lining up asking for a drink. That little cocktail shaker broke and it wouldn't open. <laughs> And I just got so angry, I just welled up inside and got upset and started crying. Everyone's getting in my ear. Honestly, I don't want to do this party anymore. Listen to me. You are going to do this No, I'm not. Pull yourself together right now. I've got a problem because I get angry. Until you control it, you can't move on. I'm trying. Unwilling to admit defeat, the teachers hatched a plan. I think it's time that you took some responsibility. I am making you the school prefect to help guide your fellow students. All right? Yes, Mrs Harbord. I was made school prefect and I was the naughty one out of the whole group. So the girls must have been like, what? It'll be like, easy as. It was anything but. Stop it! They went against her. Can you please come inside now? Please get off! <laughs> Whatever I'm not meant to do, I will do. Yes. Because we have a prefect here to tell me otherwise. Thank Bad you girl. I'll see you to the principal's office. No one would listen to what I had to say. This is respecting me. Didn't give a crap. They were kind of rebelling against my authority because normally I was the one rebelling against the teacher's authority. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> it was a taste of her own medicine, and Skye didn't like it one bit. And they fucking hate my guts. Stop swearing. Stop. I thought we all got along, and I thought everyone was friends, and I'm being called selfish. And it's, honestly, I don't want to talk about it. Honestly, I thought I was a good person. You are a good Back person. Back at home, no one calls me selfish. She hated it. She couldn't cope with it because she just wanted to be liked all the time. And she confronted some really big issues there. I'm so angry! You don't understand! Yes, I do understand. Oh. 
I do understand because. No! Yes, I do. I don't want to go home. No. Expel me. Can I, I do something like, really bad? No. She had to face her demons then. And that was quite a thing, quite a feat. And she had to get through that to come through the other. And she had to gain their trust. This was a defining moment for Skye. And now she redoubled her efforts to keep the girls in line. We can sneak another one. You don't want to get me in trouble. No, no honestly. We'll take the blame for you. But you can't. Whatever me and the girls get up to, I have to take responsibility for. If we're laid back from the pub, we're going to ruin our, you know, trust with the teachers. And they're not going to let us out again. I'm so serious. I don't want to get in trouble. The conversation was Mrs. Hubble, isn't it? Oh, my God. The conversation was so good, we forgot about time. You'll see us on another day soon. The Ladettes did as they were told. And that night, Sky earned her stripes. She did try hard, and I do believe that we found something there. On the teacher's good side for once, Sky turned her attention to eligible bachelor Yian Walker. I wasn't expecting to meet a bachelor and actually like him. I thought, no, nah, all these boys are going to be all stuck up. They're cute, so scruffy. But he's a true gentleman. I act definitely like a lady around him, and he puts me into my place. And he's so handsome. <laughs> Spurred on by her extracurricular liaison, Skye made it to the final three. I was gobsmacked. I was like... We have to present this Sky Every week I thought, oh my God, I'm gone. And then to see me graduate, they must have seen that I was actually trying. It would be ideal to be able to keep Skye for six months to a year. <laughs> I should think it would be her worst nightmare. Not my absolute dream, either. Now, back in Brisbane, Skye's got a job, but she's the first to admit she's finding it hard to meet Eggleston's high expectations. Since I've been back, it's been a bit of, like, a reality smack in the face. Like, you know, we've come back to, you know, Australian ways of getting drunk and going out there, and it's hard to hold yourself back. Mum, it's Yael! At least the long-distance romance with Bachelor Yian is blossoming. How cute is that? We've been in contact heaps, and it's my little ambition to go back over to England. His influence is a good influence on me, so being around people like that will make me apply my ladylike um, behaviour. I've tried to start off with a new persona as the lady, instead of giving the first impression that, you know, she's crazy and out there. How have you got on with your trying? to give this new persona. <laughs> Has it worked? <laughs> it's been so difficult. Because everyone in Australia is so out there and like to express themselves. She is making excuses for herself in, oh, well, you know, I'm trying, but I find it very difficult. Well, you know, the answer there is you try harder. Um, I think with Skye, I'm not sure what she wants out of life. I'm not sure she's genuine enough or wants the whole package enough to move on, to put the work that's required in it, because it does take work. Coming up... Just a tad drunk. A moment of clarity for Zoe. I started realising, OK, I need to do something about my life. I need to do something with my life. At an exclusive club in Sydney Harbour, five ex-pupils from Eggleston Hall are becoming reacquainted with their teachers. I have um, cooked for my mum and everyone, and I've Fantastic. done asparagus wrapped in prosciutto hair. Of all the ladettes to be expelled from finishing school, it was Zoe Irons who caused the biggest upset when she left. The person I missed at the end, it's Zoe. She should have been there. Please take your arm and stand up straight. Thank you. Yeah. It was a bad start. From day one, it was clear Zoe was going to drive the teachers to distraction. Get in the bed now! <laughs> Back home in Adelaide, her idea of a perfect weekend was a two-day bender. I wake up and I'm like, OK, what are we going to do today? Where should we go? Where should we drink? Oh, yes. Binge drinking, a classic Ladette trait. Of course they're going to drink. But you see, that's the test, it's the challenge. Can they say no? Now, some of them do, some of them don't. You address the ones who don't, but unfortunately with Zoe, Zoe went that step further every single time. Finishing the school was just one big free bar for Zoe. 
every time temptation came her way, she got stuck in. I didn't moderate my drinks very well at all. <laughs> Even if I was already drunk, I would still keep drinking. Just a tad drunk. <laughs> at the end of the first week, she committed an unpardonable offence. And after a few drinks, I was a bit louder. Excuse me, are you still drunk? Before long, the principal was spelling it out in no uncertain terms. I would like you not to drink one drop. Yes, I will do that. I thought this is going to be a challenge. At first, Zoe stayed true to her word. I hear you've had one sip of alcohol. You will be in no big trouble. You haven't I haven't seen you drinking. No, I don't. <laughs> Zoe? Yes? Will you please remember tonight you have a challenge? But as the night wore on, her resolve wore off. I actually felt under a lot of pressure then because I was telling them I wasn't allowed to drink. It was like peer pressure, you know? Oh, come on, come on, it's OK. And I, and I fell and um, I lost my battles. <laughs> I felt I needed to be honest with them and tell them, yeah, I did have a drink and um, I thought that was better than lying. I am appalled, Zoe. Appalled. What are we doing? Is it worth bothering with you? <laughs> Ignoring the teacher's pleas, it wasn't long before Zoe was back on the razzle. Oh, oh Zoe. <laughs> she actually admitted to me that she had she had a problem. She just had to sort it out. You're not a failure. In fact, I think you're very strong. I would like you not to drink at all, all right? From now onwards, this is a new life. Yeah. Will um, you try and do that for me? I will, Mrs. Shane. I started to realise this is very serious, and I thought I really need to start changing, and that's probably the biggest thing than when I started realising, OK, I need to do something about my life. I need to do something with my life. I'm being a good girl. Oh, my God. At a formal dinner the next evening, Zoe seized the chance to show she meant business. No, I haven't been drinking tonight, which is fantastic. I think Mrs. Shea will be so proud of me. I didn't drink at all, um, which was really good. Cheers. I woke up fresh in the morning and I thought, gee, you know, I feel so good this morning. I just got to remember this feeling. You have done the most amazing thing. You didn't drink last night. Okay. And I cannot tell you how happy I am that you actually achieved this last night. <sighs> and this is a new beginning, if you want it. This is what it's all about. Yep. Thank you. Zoe had come a long way. This is just the first step. We would like to see you complete that journey with your family and your friends back home in Australia. We thought long and hard before we took our final decision and sent Zoe home. Zoe, come with me. Come. Come. I can't believe it. I wanted to show him I can do it again. You did succeed last night, but you know what? This is a huge problem for you, but you can do it. My biggest influence on me would be Mrs. Schrager. We um, became very close. Do you know what? You're so special. And she really had a big impact on my life. Thank you for everything, Mrs. Schrager. <laughs> Never ever forget you. Thank you so much for everything. I've had the most fabulous time. Thank so much. <laughs> I'll see you back in Australia. Yeah. Both Rosemary and I are not equipped for some of Zoe's problems, but in other ways, I think we got through and I hope we've helped to change her life. Returning home, 
Zoe moved back to Cairns and left her old slacker lifestyle behind. <laughs> to keep myself busy, I've been going out to um, a young animal protection society, doing volunteering, looking after dogs, which is fantastic. I enjoy it so much. And just exercising and keeping thin and healthy. And she's been working hard at something else, too. Have you been drinking? I have a few here and there, but if I do drink, I will have a, a drink and then a water. So moderation. Good. Yeah, it's something I've learnt from you, so no. that's great. Good, that's really important. Yeah, it is. She's, she's done so well. She's, she has moved on. You know, we pushed you. You pushed us <laughs> to the limits, which we needed. Which we needed. We needed to be we pushed said, yes, to that you limit did. where we have to try really hard, you know. We have to complete things, and that's thanks to you. So. Oh, Zoe, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, thank you, Mrs. Oh, sweetheart, oh, sweetheart. Oh. No, I love you so much. Well, you're very special. Yeah. You are a very special person. Thank you. Coming up, a remarkable transformation arouses suspicions. I fear that Kristen did quite a lot of acting with us. The Eggleston Hall Old Girls Reunion is underway. While finishing school has obviously worked wonders for some, of others, the teachers have their doubts. I'm Hello. not sure who this person oh is. Yeah. She seems Look. to have changed the colour of her hair. <laughs> she has very fair. On the face of it, 21-year-old Kristin Gort looked every inch the lady at her graduation from Eggleston Hall. But just five weeks earlier, this party animal from Perth arrived at finishing school ready to raise hell. When you arrived here, you looked like a rat bag. Will you please stop laughing? No! And it wasn't long before Kristin found herself on the receiving end of Mrs. Schrager's sharp tongue. I'm trying to help you here, and you are really getting on my whip. You won't take this seriously, then why should I even bother and actually forget about it and say, get on with it? I thought she hated me, and she scared the shit out of me. It was when the teachers insisted on a radical makeover that things began to change. I like you're looking at a whole new person. <laughs> that colour is beautiful on you. <laughs> but Kristin's ratty hairstyle wasn't the only thing that had vanished. I'm now looking at a presentable young woman. Your hair really does you justice. But there is this problem that I've lost the personality. Uh, where are you? I mean, she tried in her own way, but she was really quite bland with us. Your lights have gone out. There does not appear to be anyone at home. They kept saying I needed a personality, and it was just like, well, how the hell am I going to show you? I really don't think they wanted to see my true personality. She wasn't giving us much to work with. Eventually, a little personality did show through. Prefect, we're being naughty. Sky being the prefect, I think, is going to be quite amusing. <laughs> we were horrible. We wanted to test her and actually see if she could do it, and we did make it hard for her. Hey, I'm pulling your hair! <laughs> what? Mm. We had to burn as much hair off you as possible. She put up with our crap for a while and didn't bite back. <laughs> you were vile to Sky. Why? We became really cross with her and really started to put the pressure on. I felt disgusted with myself and I don't like to upset people. She began to learn, I think, to smile, learn how to communicate, and slowly but surely we saw this new person emerging. In many ways, Kristin was a model student. Top of the class in cookery. Well, for everyone. Best meal I've like had in a month. She impressed the guests at a formal dinner party. So it came as no surprise that Kristen was one of the three girls picked to graduate from Eggleston Hall. So I'm going to leave Eggleston Hall with some great knowledge. My eyes are opened and a smile upon my face. Thank you. I would hope that we saw the right Kristen and the true Kristen, because one of the things that her mother said to me after she had graduated disturbed me greatly. 
she asked me about certain behavioural problems that Kristen had. Now, we hadn't seen that, and I just fear that perhaps Kristen did quite a lot of acting with us. Twelve. Oh, yes. Very glam. Now back in Perth, Kristen has jacked in her bar job and started work in a garage. City Toyota Service Department, Kristen speaking. I hope to get an apprenticeship because it's something I've wanted to do for years and I keep putting it off and I just think it would be great working under the bonnet of my car, being able to fix it all the time. Now, where have you come from? Perth. So you've flown in a yes. long way. Uh, long this morning? Way. No, last night. Last night. Yes. You stayed in the hotel? Yes. <sighs> Rested a bit. You weren't, you weren't up all night drinking. No. no. <laughs> Just half. Just a little bit. But that's not quite the whole story. I've fallen back into drinking a bit. Easily go through a bottle of spirits a night and keep going. I just keep drinking till I pass out. Did you stop all your your swearing and everything? Do you think? Yeah, a lot more, definitely. <sighs> uh, I. I think Kristen has been the actress, and I don't think she has changed at all. She may say she doesn't swear so much, but I think that's probably all. Coming up... If he didn't, you'd be a fucking slut. ..the toughest challenge of all. If we do one girl and she succeeds, doesn't that make it all worthwhile? Time and again, the teachers of Eggleston Hall have proved they can work wonders with wayward girls. Do you feel, having come to Eccleston, it was the, it was a sort of moment in your life that it really did do something for yeah, you? Yeah, it was the ultimate gift to me. It's done the world of good for me, it really has. Because they do succeed, and they do, some of them do really, really well. Do you know what, if we do one girl and she succeeds, doesn't that make it all worthwhile? Three months ago, Nicole Mitchell, the 21-year-old stripper, was happy to play the tramp at the drop of a hat, or bra. You know how you're supposed to have, like, the good guy and the bad? Yeah, I think I've just got the bad. I don't know where the good guy's gone. Nicole's journey was a very big one. This breed of ladette was a new low for the staff of Eggleston Hall. It wasn't my intentions at all to try and, you know, impress them or even really care what they thought. I've never met a stripper. We're all normal people, too. I had a problem myself with Nicole to begin with. I didn't think she'd last five minutes. <laughs> At first, Nicole seemed hell-bent on proving Mrs. Schrager right. I'm a stripper. I take my clothes off for a living. I think you could do a lot better. At a hunt tea, she shocked guests with her vulgar antics. <laughs> Bloody hell. Someone was telling me I was taking my clothes off and dancing around, and I was that drunk I didn't remember, and I thought, no way. After just a few days, Nicole's loose ways landed her in trouble. Loud, irritating flashing your body about, and the most awful manners. Yes. But manners weren't the only problem. In her second week, an encounter with two racy huntsmen tipped Nicole over the edge. Miss Whiplash. I was just starting to hate men in general and not being able to trust anyone. Have her taken straight to the bedroom. <laughs> well, we don't want to take it to the bed. You're not a fucking gentleman at all. I was thinking that every man is the same as the people that are in the stripping club. The saucy huntsman had touched a raw nerve. Oh, You're not teaching me anything. They're teaching me to be a fucking slut. This is not the fucking what I wanted. I wanted to be helped. Tone down. You won't even let me speak. I asked for a Nicole, minute. Nicole, let me Nicole, have it. So I, don't, I, I don't want to end this conversation. Nicole, fair Can enough. I this? Because I'm not Nicole, getting anything through. Nicole. And there's no point. There were times when the short-fused stripper seemed like a lost cause. I'm quite surprised to see you still here, Nicole, because my last recollection was you storming out of the room. You're not actually taking in what we're trying to teach you. It's very hard to hear. I'm trying. It took a lot of work from her, and slowly but surely, it began to come out. Oh, I feel fabulous. I feel amazing. Desperate to prove she could change her ways, Nicole threw herself into the tasks of the next four weeks. Large, nice and tall. She found herself a role model. I would really love to be like you. Me? Yes. What we have here is a recognition. I thought that was genuine, didn't you? And by the fifth week, Nicole was heading in the right direction. The prince is so charming, so I thought he'd be really 
sort of snobby and hard to talk to, but he's a really genuine, nice guy, so it's great. <laughs> but behind the smiles lurked a troubled past. Honestly, if I was to sit down and tell you everything about my life, you'd probably be in tears. When she was just seven years old, Nicole was taken into care. My elder sister Lisa ran away, so my mother left me and my other sister Christine in a caravan alone for like two nights by ourselves. I don't know who dobbed us in, I think it was someone in the caravan park, and we just woke up one morning with knocks on the door, and I opened it up, and there was police officers and docks workers everywhere, and they just pretty much took us away and just left my mum a note, which I still think to this day would have been so heartbreaking for my mum just to come over to a note going, you know, we've taken your children. Growing up, I'd always wake up screaming for my mum. I really felt a difference with her after I did have, you know, my talk with Mrs Harboy. I just felt a lot more comfortable around her and I felt, you know, she sort of understands me now. Nicole, I think you've had such a life that you, I know you have. Do not give up. I have faith in you. She had to understand we were in it for the long haul. We weren't in it for five minutes and she had to start trusting us for that. Screw up, come on. You have so much to offer. She was a very sad little girl when she came to us. And the way she overcame and surmounted those problems, the courage that that girl has is amazing. Five weeks after she arrived at Eggleston Hall, Nicole faced the daunting prospect of graduating in front of real aristocrats. I thought she'd toned down in the most beautiful way from yes. a few weeks ago. We have, as this year's winner, Nicole. I didn't really think at all that I would even graduate, let alone win. Because of the way I grew up, I just gave it my all and I was just so happy that it ended up, you know, me being the winner. I wish I could wave a magic wand and launch that little girl into a lovely life. But back in Sydney, it was never going to be easy for Nicole to shake off her past. There is one step above all steps that I hope Nicole has made and it's probably one of the most difficult for her and that is her livelihood. I want her to have ceased her stripping. I could not see myself doing that now, no way. I couldn't, I couldn't get myself on the stage because I'd see everybody's faces, Mrs Harbour just going. <laughs> I definitely feel like I'm more a positive person and I feel like, yeah, I could just do anything I put my mind to. Not only has she given up stripping, Nicole is planning a whole new career. I'm actually starting a horticulture course on Monday. I can't believe I know. what I'm doing. I know. Mrs Hartwood inspired me to have more of a love for um, flower arranging and like just working with plants, so I think definitely um, doing the horticulture course is something that you know I'll really enjoy. So everyone's really happy with me, so I'm quite good. Happy with you? Yeah. I'm ecstatic. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge jump in the right direction. Yes, it definitely is. I really wanted to make you as proud. I didn't want. You have. Yeah, it's, without... I, it's meant a lot to me, and I think of you guys as the world. I really did look at you as like a sort of mother role model because I didn't have it and to have somebody that stuck by me and kept pushing me, you can do it, you can do it. It's just amazing. It's what I really needed just to get me where I am today and it's, I just, I can't, I can't say thank you enough. It was so wonderful to just see her, to see that little face not being made into funny faces, to see a far more assured girl and one who is very positive about the fact that she is not going back. She is going to go forward. And that's the biggest prize you can give me. <laughs> the reunion is almost over. So how have this year's Ladettes measured up to the exacting standards of Eggleston Hall? I am just so pleased. I wasn't looking for 100%. I knew it wasn't going to be 100%. In fact, 
I think we had three girls who were exactly where we thought would be, and they've done an amazing job, and it couldn't be better. I couldn't be more thrilled. I really couldn't. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.